Is SoFi stock ready to break to new all-time highs? We'll talk about that and more on today's show. What is going on, investors? Hopefully, you guys are having a fantastic day out there. Now, if you had a SoFi stock in your portfolio, you did a little bit of a roller coaster today during the regular session and down a really lucky number, 7.77% or $1.72, down to about $20.42 per share. But after reporting earnings after the bell, which we will get into, we'll take a look at the revenue, the revenue growth. We'll take a look at some news that SoFi is making that should be positive here in the future. Take a look at the mix of loans, and then we'll look at it from a financial perspective. Some interesting things going on here. Tell you what, this company is doing a nice job on some things, and I'll point them out when we look at that. And then we'll look at this from a technical perspective. There is a critical level. I tell you what, it's like 40 cents above where the stock is right now. And that is an area where we're looking for a breakout on SoFi stock. If we can break out above that one, I tell you what, this one could start to rip roar to the upside. We do got an $18 billion valuation. Probably not going to make a lot of sense from a traditional valuation perspective. But when you factor in a lot of what SoFi is doing, they're being super aggressive on things. They could potentially grow into this valuation. Now, speaking of the most recent quarter, Q3 came in. They basically beat on the top and the bottom line. Revenue came in at $272 million. That is up 35% year over year, which look, isn't a tech, necessarily like tech-like explosion, but this is pretty, really good when you're talking about kind of fintech or financial stocks. Now, the shares are reacting, like we said, positively in the after hours. The company added 377,000 new members. That's the second highest quarterly increase in the company's history. Now, what this company is looking to do, it's not unsimilar to a lot of traditional banks. And we'll talk about here in a second how SoFi is actually trying to become a traditional bank. What they're trying to do is bring you in the door with some kind of product. Maybe it's a home loan origination. Maybe it's a refi on some kind of debt. And then they want to upsell you to some of their other products. And they're constantly trying to do that. And that's SoFi's basically bread and butter is they bring in the customer and then they spread you across a bunch of different products and make money off of you a bunch of different ways. Not too unsimilar to what we've seen with even like a Bank of America or like a Chase, but this company is a little bit more aggressive and I kind of like what they're doing personally. Now, SoFi Technology, this bank is, we might be able to call them a bank here in a soon because they acquired Golden Pacific Bank Corp, basically this tiny bank, but they have a national bank charter. And you often see this in the fintech world. If you need a national banking charter, which will allow you to take deposits from customers and then loan that out, out, just like a traditional bank, like a Bank of America or a JP Morgan, well, this will allow SoFi to do that. So they go and buy this tiny little bank basically for the charter, and then they're able to roll out their properties across the entire United States very quickly without having to do this on their own. It's a very cost-effective way for SoFi to become a national bank. And again, what it's going to allow them to do, the reason why they're doing this, is they're going to be able to take deposits from customers and then allows SoFi to lend that money out just again like every single other bank does out there in the world. Now, in terms of the mix that we're seeing from a lending perspective over at SoFi, we still have one of the largest revenue segments are these home loans. We are seeing these continue to grow in, I wouldn't say real estate's like a challenging market. It's just slowed down to a certain degree and I think everybody expected that, but you still saw 26% home loan growth originations over the last year on a quarterly basis over over at SoFi. Now, personal loans is their bread and butter business, and that is surging. Okay, hello, up 166% to $1.6 billion worth of originations. Look, actually, home loans was higher than personal loans, and personal loans wasn't even high as student loans last year, and now they've totally flipped it. It's showing me the nimbleness of SoFi, okay? They figure out what market they can get customers in, and then they go out and aggressively get that. So notice they really took hold of personal loans. Now, it came at a little bit of an expense in terms of student loans. Those are down 6% as people just simply aren't maybe going to college or borrowing as much money as they have in the past when it comes to student loans. So you see those off just a little bit. Now, in terms of our profit and loss statement over at SoFi, interesting stuff here. So we've got our interest income. This is bread and butter stuff. I tell you what, I see arguments every day. Rates are going to go up and it makes a lot of sense, right? But then I listen to these guys saying rates might stay low and they just keep going lower. Well, and, and their arguments make a lot of sense. I'm not going to predict which rates way rates are going to go, 
But I tell you what, SoFi does a nice job. And if we can get an increase in interest rates, becoming a bank charter, loaning money out will all of a sudden become even more profitable. So our total interest income came in at $93 million in the most recent quarter. Now we did have interest expense of about $21 million. That gets us net interest income at $72 million. I tell you what, hello, okay? Off $93 million worth of revenue, you got income of $72 million. That it can become an absolutely explosive business for this type of company. I love that. Now, they've got other non-interest income, including the loan originations. Basically, they originate these loans and then they sell them off. That's still their highest income, okay? About $142 million worth of revenue. And then they also got these technology platform fees. I love fees when you're a bank. You got to love these fees because this is probably the highest of high margins. You got 49, nearly $50 million worth of fees. Obviously, the more users you can acquire onto SoFi, the more fees you can start charging these people. So I love that. So we've got our total non-interest income that came in at basically 200 million. So you take this 72 million, you plus it to about 200 million and you get $272 million worth of total net revenue when you factor in our interest income and then our other other income as well, not related to interest. We are up $72 million over the last year on a quarterly basis. You went from 200 up to 272. Look at it for the last year. You went from about 395 up to about $700 million worth of revenue. Now, this company does have lots of expenses, okay? So we've got all our non-interest expenses and those are growing over the last year, take a look at this. On a quarterly basis, we went from 243 up to 301. I'm not really that disappointed with that, okay? Because take a look. Our total net revenue went up by about $72 million, right? Okay, you went from 200 million up to 272. Well, look at our expenses. They went from 243 up to 301. That's about $57 million increase. So we are flowing more money down to the bottom line over at SoFi. Here's our net net loss after we factored in some income taxes, or in this case, a benefit, we net lost $30 million. But look, last year we're at 42. Okay. And look, this company's got an $18 billion valuation. They're still behind the eight ball, especially when it comes to competitors in the traditional banking segment. But they are improving their net loss on a quarter over quarter basis on a year over year basis in that sense. Now, year over year on the nine months, we're still losing more and more money. Okay. 141 up to this 372. But what this most recent quarter tells me is maybe we'll start to see a flattening of that net loss over at SoFi. Now, in terms of a technical perspective, this actually looks Okay, now we do have what could be maybe a head and shoulders pattern forming or something like that, but you basically have a top, a lower high here, and this looks like if it tops out here, we are making just the smallest of downtrends, so in the longer term, this stock is making lower highs. I'm not super concerned about that. I tell you what, in the coming days, you really need to see SoFi get up into this box up in here. Those are basically the all-time highs with the stocks. That's basically north of about $23.50 per share, which I tell you what, is basically where the stock is right now. This is what tells me this is an area of resistance. It's hard to drop this in accurately. We have a lot of wicking candles all through this price action, but it's somewhere in here, okay? 23, 24, maybe even as high as 20, I would say as probably as high as $24 is where we need to get above to prove to me that we are now making higher highs and this stock is going to continue this uptrend because notice in the shorter term, this stock is in a very nice uptrend, okay? The pattern that it's made off its lows just a few months ago at about $14 per share has just rallied hard. Now, will that rally continue? Will the sellers start to show up and the buyers start to dry up at these levels? That is what we were going to find out over the next few days with SoFi. A break above the $24 level, and I think even if you really wanna be safe, I think you're looking for a break above the $25 level and be super safe. You actually need to get all the way up above $26 per share to say, yes, this uptrend is absolutely intact. And when you get to these all-time highs, stocks can absolutely just have a blowout move. Take a look at NVIDIA. The stock got above all-time highs and then just had a blowout type move. 
move. So if you're very bullish SoFi, that is what you're hoping for. You're hoping to walk up to these all-time highs, continue this momentum, and get this stock to shoot higher. Now, the other scenario is we get rejected at this $24 level because it acted as a little bit of support here. But once we got under 24, this is back in February earlier this year, stock dropped and it dropped hard all the way down to 15. Then we came all the way back to 24 and got rejected again, back to $14, $15. So what's potentially possible is we come back up here here to $24 per share. And if my line would draw in, you could see that, yes, we could potentially drop back down here to $14 or $15 per share. Those are the two scenarios that I see. And I tell you what, with stocks like this, it's really 50-50. That's why I like to wait for that confirmation that we have either busted up above the highs. And if you bust above the highs, you can buy this one. If you dip back into $14, $15, maybe even intermediate levels, $17, $18 on this share, Yes, I actually think you can buy the dip on this one. Again, this all is predicated by the fact that you're comfortable with this valuation, $18 billion, and the fact that this company is going to need to continue to aggressively grow, but getting this bank charter eventually and just the expansion of their products and their customer base looks like to me, this company has the potential to grow into this type of valuation at some point. That was SoFi Technologies. Hopefully you guys have a great day out there. Good luck with your investments.